Today we will be talking about the Stokes parameters and Mueller matrices. This is a technique or rather a parameter defined to study the polarization of light. We have already discussed the polarization of light, the different aspects of the polarization of light, the different uh, types of polarized light, and the Jones matrix, explanation of the polarization by Jones matrix. The so Jones matrix is what one method of uh, treating the polarized light. Similar, we have other matrix, um, method, uh, which is the Stokes parameters and the Mueller matrices. So we start with the basic concept of the light, which is an electromagnetic wave. And uh, it's also a transverse wave with the electric and magnetic vectors perpendicular to each other and also perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Here, Z is the direction of propagation and the electric vector is oscillating in the X direction and the magnetic vector is oscillating in the Y direction. And uh, as we have already seen, that the polarization is very important for communication, for transmission of electromagnetic waves in different kinds of mediums. So basically, there are three types of polarization, the linear polarization, the circular polarization, and the elliptic polarization. Apart from that, there is a mixture of polarizations, like random polarization, where we have the Polarized vectors are oriented randomly and partial polarization where part of the light is polarized and part remains unpolarized. So the three basic polarizations can be seen here. The linear polarization, the circular polarization, and the elliptic polarization. In linear polarization, you can see a simple vector propagating as a wave. In circular polarization, there are two oscillations with the phase difference of 90 degrees, pi by two phase difference, and the amplitudes of both are equal, so they trace a circle, and the wave is propagating like this helically. In elliptical polarization, the amplitudes are not equal and the cross-section uh, is ellipse. So basically, circular polarization is a special case of elliptical polarization. And we will see later on how it is. So we start with the linearly polarized light. And if the plane of the electric field does not change as the wave propagates, the wave is said to be linearly polarized. And we consider a linearly polarized wave propagating in the z direction. The electric vectors are oscillating in the y direction. So the electric field is zero in the x direction and in the y direction, it is C e2 cos omega t minus beta z, where omega is the angular frequency and beta is the wave number. So this is a linear, this simple linear polarization. And it can be taken to be a superposition of two waves in orthogonal planes propagating in the same direction. We have already seen while uh, treating the propagation about the Fresnel assumptions that the wave can be treated as a superposition of two waves. This is a similar thing. And this uh, linearly polarized wave can be taken to be a superposition of two oscillations, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. The x one is represented as E1 sine omega t minus beta z. And the y1 is e2 sine beta omega t minus beta. So there is the same oscillations. So the only difference is the in the cos and sine. So this is the resultant vector, and these are the two oscillations. And the ratio of them is defined as tan. So for linear polarization, the condition is that the phase difference between these two superimposing oscillations must be zero and the magnitudes must also be different. So these are 
So this is what we get from the polarizer. If the polarizer is in the y direction, we get a vertically vertically polarized light. And if it's in the x direction, we get a horizontally polarized light. This is the unpolarized light here. And we are getting a horizontally polarized light. This is the unpolarized light and we are getting the vertically polarized light where it is in the vertical direction. So this is how we get the horizontally and vertically, vertically polarized lights. Now let's come to circularly polarized wave. The magnitudes of the two oscillations of the electric vector, the x direction and the y direction is equal. But there is a phase difference of pi by 2, which can be a plus pi by 2 or it can be minus pi by 2. But the phase difference between the two should be pi by 2. So the ratio, the excess ratio should be 1 because we have said that the magnitudes of Ex and Ey should be equal. We take this form of vectors. The x vector is e even sine omega t minus beta z and the y vector is omega t minus beta z plus minus a phase difference of pi by 2. And uh, we have already taken e1 is equal to e2 as the both the vectors are of equal magnitude. Now, if the electromagnetic wave can be either a right circularly polarized wave or a left circularly polarized wave, depending upon the rotation of the electric field around the direction of the propagation. So we plot a figure between the z and the vector, and it goes rightwards in the clock direction, then the wave is right circularly polarized. And if it goes in the left direction or the anti-clock direction, it is the left circularly polarized wave. You can see, compare. This is the di uh, diagram. The first figures are for the left circularly and the right, uh, this one in the clockwise direction is for the right circularly. The vector has been plotted and you can see the difference between the two. These are left circularly polarized and this one is the right circularly polarized. Now, the third one is the electrically polarized light. As we see, have seen in the circularly polarized light, in electrically polarized light, the magnitudes Ex and Ey are not equal, but the phase difference between the two remains the same, that is pi by 2. So, the only difference between the circular and electric polarized light is that the way that Wave vectors are not equal in electrical polarized, and if they are equal, then the light becomes circularly polarized light. And thus, circularly polarized light is a limiting case of the elliptically polarized light, where the two wave vectors are equal. The next one is the randomly polarized light, where the plane of electric field changes its orientation randomly, but the magnitude remains constant. And the, here, the plane of the electric field are random functions of time. The probability of orientation of the electric field in any direction in the xy plane is same. The magnitude of the electric field at any instant of time is always same. Here, you can see the linear, circular, and the elliptical polarized line. Now, we come to polarization ellipse. This is a theoretical concept to analyze the polarized light. We start with the basic wave vectors. The x1 is the even sine omega t minus beta z and y vector is the omega omega t minus beta z plus a phase difference of delta. We take the x vector. We rearrange the terms so that we get the ratio of Ex and E1. 
And by using the trigonometric identity, we can sign, change the sine into cos. We get equation 2. And similarly, for the y vector, we get the ratio of EY and E2. And we treat these equations simultaneously, equation 1 and 3. That is, we substitute the value of sine omega t from equation 1 in equation 3. And also the value of cos omega t from o equation 2 and 3. So, equation 3 now becomes this. We rearrange the terms. Now, we square the equation and re again rearrange the terms. So, this is the equation of the ellipse. Like and we can see, this equation 6 represents an ellipse. So, we plot the wave vectors EX and EY. We are going to get the shape of an ellipse. You can see in the figure, it's an ellipse. And the polarizing angle is the ratio of both the amplitudes. So, for linear polarization, this is the case. And for circular polarization, we have this case. For left, the phase difference is uh, plus. And for the right, circularly polarized light, the phase difference is negative. Like I spoke earlier, that it can be plus minus by by. If it is plus pi by 2, it is left circular polarized light, and it will minus pi by 2, it is right circular polarized. So we can see that the this is the polarization ellipse, and in three dimensions, it takes the shape of a sphere, and that is called as point gear sphere, which is a three-dimension analogy of the polarization ellipse. But we have limitations of this polarization ellipse. We have got the uh, equation of ellipse, which is valid for a particular instant of time t. It is not valid for every value of time. The ellipse is valid for a particular value of time. So, Later on, GG Strokes came up with a set of uh, parameters called the Stokes parameters to analyze the polarized light. And there are four parameters which we'll see later on theoretically how they are defined. So, we again consider the equation of the polarization ellipse. And all information about polarization is contained in this equation because we have started with the very basics of the polarization vectors. We average, since this is valid for a particular instant of time, so we average this equation over time. And the time-dependent quantities in the polarization ellipse, we get this equation where the product EX and EY have this value. Now we multiply this equation by 4AX square AY. And this equation becomes this. We rearrange the terms, it becomes this. And the product gets this value, which on simplification reduces to this term. But 
from the above equation, we get the squares of the x and y amplitude vectors. We substitute these values. This one, this one, and this one in this equation on the top. We see that this equation we get this equation where all the electric vectors have been substituted by the amplitudes. Now we square and add this term on the left hand side. Oh, we add and subtract this term on the left hand side. We get this equation. So basically, the, now we get defined four parameters i, q, u, and v, which are called Stokes parameters, and they are equivalent to the parameters of the polarization ellipse since their value is defined in terms of the amplitude ax and ay. These four vectors are this s0, s1, s2, s3, or we have another notations for the same vectors i, q, u, v. The first one, uh, first uh, parameter is equal to ax square plus ay square. The second one is ax square minus ay square. The third is 2 ax ay cos delta. And the fourth is 2 ax ay sin delta. And these stroke parameters are related by the relation s0 square is equal to s1 square plus s2 square plus s3 square. And when these term four parameters are written in a matrix form, it is called the Stokes vector. On the bottom, of the on the left hand side, we can see that it is the Stokes vector. We can write this. And we can also say that Ax square plus Ay square is the intensity. Ax square minus Ay square the Minimum intensity my, my intensity at 0 degree minus intensity at 9 pi by 2. And the, uh, this cost term is the intensity at 45 degree minus intensity at 135 degree. And the sine term is the intensity of the right circular polarization minus intensity of the left circular polarization. So in this way, we define the scope. Where the stroke vectors for different kinds of polarized light is we have listed here, but we come to detail afterwards. This is the pictorial representation of the Stokes parameters from this 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 relation, the Stokes parameters written here can be represented graphically through this. Total intensity, intensity is 0 minus 90. You can see the so total intensity is at 0 minus 90. And similarly, minus 135. So when we write uh, the uh, strokes vectors for the left hand polarized light, for the uh, light vertically, this is the left horizontally polarized light left vertically polarized light, polarization as plus 45 degree, polarization at minus 45 degree. These are the Stokes vector and they are in the form of a matrices like we were having in Jones matrix. Similarly, we have the matrices for the circularly polarized light also. For the right circularly polarized light and for the left circular. The degree of polarization is defined as IP upon IP plus IN, which in terms of the Stokes parameters, which is our concern, is defined as the ratio of the square roots of S1 square plus S2 square plus S3 square to the ratio of S0. So this is the degree of polarization in terms of the Stokes parameters. Like we treated in Jones matrices, 
we if we are given a matrix of an incident uh, polarized light and we have the matrix for the device it can be a polarizer or an analyzer we can multiply the matrices and we can get the matrix of the emergent light so in a similar manner if we have the stokes vector of the incident light if we have the Mueller matrices of the device, that is the polarizer, analyzer, or retardation or excavating plate, we can multiply both of them and we can get the Stokes vector of the emergent light and can, we can analyze what will be the emergent light. You can see output light is equal to Mueller matrix of the device into input light. If we have three devices, we can multiply the Mueller matrices of the three one by one since the product is commutative, so it doesn't depend which matrix you multiply first. For example, if we consider the incident light to be unpolarized, the Stokes parameters are 1, 0, 0, 0. And for the matrix for the right polarizer is this. Then we can multiply the two. And we get this matrix, which is the um, a matrix of a linearly horizontally polarized light. These are the Stokes parameters. And we get the uh, vectors. We get the parameters of the emergent polarizer. Like it was in the Jones matrix, we were having a two element uh, matrix for the polarized light. Here we are having a four strokes parameters. Here, there, the Jones matrix for the polarizer and analyzers were two by two. Here, the Mueller matrices are four by four matrices. So, if we compare between the two, Irrespective of the dimensions of the matrices, uh, we can see that both the approaches, the Jones calculus as well as the Stokes parameters and Muller matrices, in both of them, the polarization state is represented by the vector and the optical elements are represented as matrices. Only the differences in this aspect, that it's a two by two matrix in Jones matrices, and it's a four by four matrix in Miller matrix. But the difference is that the Jones calculus applies only to the coherent light. The Jones, but we can have incoherent light in the Stokes vector zones. The Jones calculus qualifies the phase evolution of the electric com field components. The Jones calculus can be used to analyze interference. The Stokes parameters only describe the intensity of the light in terms of amplitude, the X and the Y. The Stokes parameters only apply to incoherent. So if we have a coherent light, we will use Jones matrix. If we have incoherent light, we will go for the Stokes parameters. So the two approaches are different in this way and it depends on why, what kind of light source we have. Second difference is, like we discussed, is that the Stokes parameters are completely dependent on the amplitude of the two the vectors Ax and Ay. So this is what uh, we define, what are the Stokes vectors, what are the Stokes parameters, inter, which are derived from the polarization ellipse, the equation of the polarization ellipse, and how these are you know, helpful with the Mueller matrices to analyze the polarization of light. So I end my lecture here today. If you have any further doubts, you can uh, write in the comment box below and uh, can also email me. And I and I thanks for a thank you all for a patient listening. Thank you.